Hello, this is a little help video for Desmos, kind of getting started. <clears throat> so when you go to Desmos calculator, make sure that you always log in. You can see where my mouse is up here in the top right. Um, it says my name, so that tells me that I'm logged in. You will not be able to do any copying of a link of your work if you're not logged into the system. Um, so as you're um, working, let's say that you wanted to do some different calculations for different problems that you were going to turn into me. Um, you can first start if you want. This plus sign lets you uh, do a bunch of different things. But first off, I'm going to go and click the untitled graph. Well, you have to do something first. I forgot. So we're going to make a folder. So there's different things you can do. You can just do any math expression using this um, just by clicking on any of the lines. If you want to write with words, you're going to type a note. If you want to create a table, you're going to use that here. Um, you can add an image or you can create a folder. So I'm going to I'm going to show what it's like for, to create a folder. So I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to put problem number one. And then I'm going to hit enter. And notice when I hit enter, there's a faint line here. That means that anything I do with the faint line is all going to be in the um, folder for problem number one. So let's say I calculate what you're going to learn is a z-score. And I want that in problem number one. And you know what? And I want to. I want my reader to know that that's a z-score. So I'm going to add another row. And oops. I'm going to go up to the plus sign and I'm going to put note. So notice in row two, it has quotes because that's going to, I can type in words. So I can say um, Z, whoops, I did it in the wrong line. Z score calculation below. Okay. Now let's say I want to go to a different problem. So I'm going to go, notice the arrow pointing down means that folder is open. And I'm going to go ahead and close that folder. Now I'm going to go back to that folder for a minute because notice that the calculation I made. <clears throat> now, um, for a z-score, you wouldn't need to do this. But when we are working in Chapter 3 and we're going to be um, calculating probabilities, sometimes they come in a fraction form. Sometimes they come in a decimal form. If an answer was in decimal form and you want to turn it to a fraction form, notice over here on line 3, I have an option that says of a fraction symbol. So if I click on that, it will put my answer into fraction form, which is nice and handy. So I'm going to close that folder and I'm going to decide because I want to save this. So I'm going to go up to save and I'm going to title it homework one. So now you can go back to that. You can see I've got all kinds of different um, files here saved. Like for instance, this one that says two proportion Z test, we're going to use this later on in the semester. But I'm gonna go back to that homework one because it's saved, I can go back to that and I can keep editing. So let's say I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm going to say, uh, I'm gonna make, oops, I'm gonna make a new folder here and I'm gonna call it problem number two. And now in there, I'm gonna enter data for weights. So data, oh, and look at it, put it in italicized. And that's because I didn't tell it I wanted to make a note. So if I go to the plus button and hit the note, I can type data for um, dog weights. And then I hit enter and I'm still within this folder. And then I can go to the plus button and say, I want to, I want to create a table of data. So I'm going to create the table and then I'll have an X1 and a Y1 and I can add different values. And then I can, um, let's say I get those data in and I'm going to go down and click a new row. And let's say um, you're going to learn how in chapter uh, two to find the mean of a data set. So I'm going to say the mean of X1 because that's where my data is. And it will take the average of the data values in X1. But notice right now that calculation for the mean is not in that folder. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to drag it into that folder and there it is. And I could even put it up here if I wanted to. But as long as the faint line is there, it's inside that folder. And then I can save it and I can go back and I can go back and edit problem one if I want. And I can edit problem two if I want. And now you'll notice if I start a new table, it's going to be labeled X2 and Y2. 
So just always be careful that you're noticing which um, the labels that are being given to your different data sets. So you know what one to reference in your calculations. Um, and you can also turn them off. If you want to turn off your data, you can just click on the color there. Um, you also can click on the color and um, oops, you can do different things with the data as well. You can go up to this gear and the gear will let you do different things as well. That should support you. One last thing, when you go to copy this for your assignment up here in the top right, watch my mouse up here in the top right, I'm gonna hit this arrow where it says share graph and it's giving me a link to my graph that I made. This says homework one and I'm gonna hit copy and then I can paste that into my Canvas course um, to submit for your homework assignment. One thing to know is if you realize you need to make some corrections from the homework and you go back and edit your Desmos link, it does not, I repeat, it does not automatically update. Like Google, once you give somebody the link, you can keep editing your Google document and it will update for them. This does not do that. So you would have to come back to make changes. You'd have to save it with your new changes for a problem that you're going to fix. And then you'd have to go back and hit, say, copy, and it will give you a new link um, for the corrected a homework in Desmos. I hope this has been helpful.